good morning class and welcome to another lecture in sustainable energy technology so far we have been discussing uh, wind uh, wind power plants and we discussed uh, the distribution of wind speeds at a given location and the corresponding distribution of available wind power at the same location as we can see in this figure so one of the key things uh, to take out from the previous uh, day's discussion is that uh, the wind speed distribution follows what we call the Rayleigh distribution. It peaks at a certain value of wind speed uh, over an entire year. So the y-axis is the number of hours and the x-axis is the wind speed. And this is at a certain specific location in Colorado, USA. And we can see that there is a certain uh, wind speed at which the average wind velocity at that location peaks. That is, you have the maximum number of hours over which wind speeds of that range blows with a long tail at higher wind speeds and a short tail at the lower wind speeds. Further, we discussed that because wind power tracks as the cube of the wind speed, the wind power distribution is proportional to the wind speed whole cube into the Rayleigh distribution for that location. And this kind of shifts the uh, available wind power distribution to the right of the wind speed distribution. What this means is most of the available wind power is obtained at the very high uh, 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 end of the tail of the wind speed distribution because even though the number of hours for which such high wind blows is small, the wind velocities are such that the total power generated in that small amount of time is a large chunk of the overall energy that is available throughout the year. Okay. Whereas, even though uh, wind blows at lower speeds over a large number of hours, the wind velocities are so low that the total power generated is a small fraction of the total power that is available throughout the year from that location. And this we discussed previously. And we also discussed the most probable wind speed, that is the median distribution, the mean wind speed, the mean distribution, similarly the most probable uh, uh, the wind speed corresponding to the most probable power was also discussed. Today we will continue from that point on what that entails when we are trying to design wind turbines. Okay, So wind turbines are given for a rated wind speed. What do we mean by that? The design of the turbine is such that it operates at maximum wind speed at a uh, operates with maximum efficiency at a given wind speed value. So one wind turbine can be rated for a 10 meter per second wind speed. Another wind turbine can be rated for 8 meters per second wind speed. Another wind turbine can be rated for 12 meters per second wind speed. That means that wind turbine performs most efficiently and optimally when the wind speed is 8 meters per second or 10 meters per second or 12 meters per second respectively. When in the location where the turbine is being installed. Okay. So how can we determine whether uh, what rating is best for a given location? So first we evaluate the wind speed distribution at that location. Okay. Okay. Now uh, wind turbines are usually rated uh, between 11 to 14 meters per second. That means it performs at its optimal maximum efficiency when the wind speed is, is, is either 11 meters, 12 meters, 13 meters or 14 meters per second. Each turbine will have a certain velocity rating. Most velocity rating values range from in this region. Okay. Now for a location for which the wind speed follows the Rayleigh distribution, we can determine the cumulative probability of the amount of time the wind speed is expected to be greater than or equal to the rated wind speed. So this is a very important idea. Suppose you have a wind turbine that is rated at 10 meters per second. Now you have a Rayleigh distribution of wind speeds at a given location. And you can determine what is the fraction of time over an entire year for which that location will have speeds greater than or equal to the rated wind speed that you are thinking about for your turbine charts. This is a cumulative probability distribution where probability of the velocity greater than or equal to your rated wind velocity is given by 
rated velocity to infinity, the Rayleigh distribution dv. Remember what the Rayleigh distribution is. This is your Rayleigh distribution. Okay. Or in terms of average velocity, this is your Rayleigh distribution. So, you are integrating this Rayleigh distribution value from your rated wind speed to infinity. So, that will give you the cumulative probability that that location will have velocities greater than the rated wind velocity for your turbine. If we do that, the expression is this one. Exponential minus pi by 4 Vr by V average whole square where Vr is your rated velocity, V average is the average velocity for that location which you can evaluate from the Rayleigh distribution directly. So now we can plot this value, this probability value with respect to the average wind velocity for that location. Okay. So suppose you have a given rated velocity a given average velocity, then the probability can be evaluated from this expression. Okay. Now, if the average velocity is changing, but your rated velocity is keeping constant, so looking at different locations, okay. So, at different locations, you have different average velocities. So, that velocity is changing and your rated velocity you are keeping fixed, either at 11, 12, 13 or 14, okay. Then the p values are also going to change. So, these two plots is the cumulative probability for two cases. The upper case is when the rated speed is 11 meters per second, the lower limit here and the lower curve is when the rated speed is 14 meters per second, the upper limit here. This is the cumulative probability distribution and this is your average wind speeds. Okay. So, the first curve, for example, suppose your average wind speed at a location is 10. So, you put V average is 10. In the first curve, you put V rated as 11. So, this becomes minus pi by 4, 11 by 10 whole square. That point will be the point you put vertically up to this point here. So, around 0.4. So, your cumulative probability distribution is around 0.4. Okay. However, if your if the rated velocity of your turbine is 14 meters per second instead, so then for the same location, you put 14 by 10 whole square into minus pi by 4 and that p, the cumulative probability, then goes to goes down to around 0.2. So, 40% of the time, your wind speeds in that location will exceed 11 meters per second, whereas it is only 20% of the time that the wind speed at that location will exceed 14 meters per second. Okay, so that's the information that you are getting. All right. Similarly, you can do this for another location, which is say uh, 8 meters per second or 7 meters per second, etc. Now you can see that for both, for 14 meters per second, the probability does not exceed 0.1 uh, beyond below 8 meters per second average wind velocity. So, you get very negligible values of probability less than 0.1 for a location whose average velocity is less than 8 meters per second, okay, for the 14 meter per second case. And when it's, uh, when you want to see how much the velocity is 11 meters per second, it's around 0.8 or 0.7, okay. So, that's the thing that uh, higher is your rated velocity of your turbine, lower is the probability that it will exceed that rated velocity for lower average wind speed locations. Okay. So, it is seen that for places with average velocities less than 5 to 6 meters per second, the probability of having wind speeds greater than the rated wind speeds are marginal for both cases. Okay. It can be seen that the average wind velocity at the location has to be greater than 10 meters per second for V rated at 11 meters per second or 13 meters per second for V rated as, as 14 meters per second for the cumulative probability to reach 40 percent which is sizable enough for the given rated speeds. So, that is why locations with low average velocities, you need turbines with lower speed ratings 
somewhat higher than the average velocity. So if your average velocity is 8 meters per second, you need speed ratings of 9 meters per second or something like that. Whereas at a location where average velocity is 10 meters per second, the speed rating of 11 meters per second is better. Okay. So at least that has to be ensured. So this helps us, this guiding principle helps us to uh, select which rated turbine blade you should see. So if a location has average velocities of 10 meters per second, then a wind turbine blade with 11 meters per second rated velocity will work. Whereas if a location has average wind speed of 13 meters per second, then a wind turbine with a rating of 14 meters per second velocity will work. Okay. Also to note that you do not want to uh, use low rated tur low velocity rated turbines in high average velocity places. So you should not use an, a wind turbine which is rated at 11 meters per second in a location where the average velocity is 12 or 13 meters per second. Okay. There is a reason for that and we will see why that is once we uh, go further in the class. Another point that needs to be noted is in most locations the meteorological department measures the wind velocity using anemometers which are quite close to the ground. So maybe one or two meters above the ground. However, wind turbine heights are typically 80 meters or 100 meters. Okay. So how do we find the velocity that is present 80 to 100 meters above the ground given the data that is available which is one or two meters above the ground. Okay. So usually, uh, sorry, not 1 or 2 meters, 10 meters above the ground. So usually wind speeds is measured around 10 meters above the ground. Okay. So there is an empirical correlation called the Hellman correlation, which is used to evaluate the wind speed at heights above 10 meters. And this is what we do when we want to estimate what is the wind speed at your turbine hub height. So this is your turbine hub, the height of the turbine hub. And this is say your anim anemometer. Okay. So this is 10 meters and this is say 100 meters. So given the data at 10 meters, what is the expected velocity at 100 meters above it? This is what this Hellman correlation gives you. So V at a certain height h equals to the measured V at 10 meters above the ground into h by 10 into alpha, where h varies from 10 to 100 meters. Okay. So this is the empirical correlation. Firstly note, uh, the alpha values here depend a little bit on the terrain. So it changes between uh, from say around 0.14 to around 0.6. Okay. So the alpha value is a semi-empirical fit depending on the terrain conditions. Okay. So for example, for flat and empty terrains, alpha is 0.14. Okay. While for populated areas, alpha is 0.3 to 0.6. Okay. So basically, this alpha value shows the gradient of change in velocity as the height increases. Okay. So those of you who know fluid mechanics, basically what this means is uh, in, uh, in populated areas or where there is a lot of ground obstacles, right? the frictional losses are much higher near the ground. So the velocity profile is more sharply parabolic. So the velocity decreases quite sharply near the ground and increases as you move up quite sharply. Okay. So that is why in populated areas, alpha is 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. Whereas over the oceans or over flat empty terrains where there is no obstacles, the frictional coefficients are much lower and the wind velocities are flatter. So there the alpha value is lower, you have 0 0.14. So the velocity is already quite high near the ground and does not increase significantly as you move up, okay. especially for flat empty terrains. Another point to notice, if ground obstacles are present like buildings, big trees, etc., it is recommended that the wind turbine blade bottom should be at least three times higher than the obstacle height. So suppose the obstacle height is 20 meters. Okay. So the bottom of the blade must be three times over this obstacle height. So the bottom of the blade must be 20 into 3. 
60 meters above the ground. So if this is 20 meters, for example, this obstacle, then this has to be 60 meters. Okay. And now if the uh, turbine radius is say 20, uh, uh, 40 meters, right? So this is 100 meters, this is 60 meters, this is 140 meters. Okay. So that's the idea. Another point to notice, good locations for turbine placements are on crests of hills and mountains and on the downward, that is the windward slope where wind speeds are significantly higher than at other locations. So tops of hills and mountains and on the windward side, not the leeward side, where the winds kind of move up like this, those are very good places to put wind turbines because the wind speeds are typically higher than surrounding local areas. So those are some of the uh, points to be remembered when you are trying to design uh, uh, your wind farm. So next we will uh, make a short derivation on the kind of efficiencies that you can get out of a wind turbine under ideal conditions. Okay.